So, yeah, talking about my family. Uh, my father was an avid uh, stock investor, invested in mutual funds, uh, ended up being very wealthy. But, um, like all of us, made some mistakes too, but also made some fabulous successes too. I was going to call this the sins of my father. <laughs> I think that's based on a book or a movie or both. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I chose the mistakes of my father. Uh, my father was an intelligent man. He was a doctor. He went through 12 years of university. He became a dermatologist. He got A's, basically. I think straight A's all the way through. Amazing. Uh, he was he was intelligent, certainly. He wasn't a genius, but he was very intelligent. Uh, he was extremely hardworking. He was very focused, so... Uh, whatever he did, he was very, very focused and very disciplined on it. Uh, so, yeah, that was um, a big part of his success. And I think all three of us sons tried to model ourselves on that. Um, he got in with a group that bought a hotel in a small city in B.C. That's British Columbia. Uh, it did okay, and they were hoping that eventually the hotel would go up in value. I think that, that one actually did all right, but that gave him confidence to get in with a bunch of other uh, projects like that. So unfortunately, my dad got into a couple more groups, and each one did not turn out so well. There was the group that would build condos in another town in BC, then another group that bought a hotel in America, then it, this hotel became a Hells Angels motorcycle gang hangout and a man committed suicide in one of the rooms. Uh, it was not good. Um, my mother came in to my room in tears. I was about 18 at the time, 17 or 18, and uh, she was saying we may lose our house, so things were not, were not good. Uh, but Dad was able to beg loans from the fourth bank he tried to in order to have enough money to keep things going until he could turn it around and they could sell it at a loss. Uh, that was this hotel in uh, Eugene, Oregon that <laughs> did not do well. Sorry to laugh, but yeah, remembering it now. The su successes of my father. Uh, my parents bought a house that increased four times in value. That was perhaps their best investment ever. Uh, and I know a lot of friends in Canada who bought an ordinary house near Vancouver and they're millionaires. Uh, that seems to be the story all throughout North America these days. Crazy prices for real estate. Another house they bought also went up in value. Uh, my father did well on the stock market. He loved stocks. And those stocks did not make him a millionaire. Just working as a doctor and saving did. His hobby basically was investing in stocks. He used to chart stocks every day. He absolutely loved it. Um, he followed Sir John Templeton and uh, put me on to Templeton. And as I mentioned, I went to a lecture uh, by John Templeton, who was great. Mom and Dad could have bought any car they wanted, but they bought Toyotas and Oldsmobiles and kept them for a long time. Uh, they did what rich people do. They stayed frugal. They had grown up in the Depression and um, that affected how they handled uh, their investments and their daily necessi necessities. And I think it's taught me uh, good lessons as well. My mistakes. I vowed when I made this course that I would own up to my mix mistakes and uh, tell about my successes too. I think honesty is the best and hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes. I vowed I would never make the mistakes of my father and mother, but I made my own. <laughs> and if you live long enough, you'll probably make your own too. Uh, but hopefully you'll have some successes as well. So you uh, hopefully come out in the end uh, in a positive way. My mistakes, I invested a lot of money offshore uh, and lost a lot of money offshore. Unfortunately, I got into a kind of Enron type investment and lost everything. I was young and cocky for a while. It seemed everything I touched turned to gold. 
I told my friends that um, I would start an English school in Japan. And they all laughed. And then uh, four branches later, 200 students, uh, four full-time teachers, including myself, no one was laughing anymore. When I would go home to Canada, I would tell people I, I taught English. I didn't mention my schools, at least at first, because if I did, they went kind of crazy and went, wow, this guy's great, and treated me like Elon Musk. This guy's got four schools in Japan. <laughs> so I would just say I'm an English teacher and let other people say that I had four schools. Um, we bought a couple of properties in BC, then we sold those properties after a few problems. Had we kept them, we would have become multi-millionaires instead of simply millionaires. My parents offered us the chance to buy their house, uh, which we refused. It went up about five times in value over 10 to 15 years. Um, it, I could have bought it for $750,000. It sold probably 10 years later or so for $2.5 million. It was this beautiful house uh, overlooking the ocean on a cliff. But yeah, I just decided I wanted to do my own thing and um, sort of didn't want, I love my parents, but didn't want that connection with them, you know, through a house. I invested with Zurich. Don't do it to yourself. You <laughs> owe yourself something better. Stay away from Zurich. They advertise all the time. They charge high fees and you get locked in. So stay away from Zurich. Andrew Hallam says the same thing. Stay away from Zurich, the Zurich company investments. I'm in a Zurich mutual fund. It's done okay, but their fees are just so high and I can't get my money out without them taking a huge penalty until I'm 65. So it's just, it's not a very kind investment. The good news is it's forced me to save. I have to pay $500 every month into it, so that's a good thing, but their fees are just too high. Uh, yeah, my successes, as I said, I started a chain of English schools that grew from zero students to over 200. We had four branches in Japan and four full-time teachers, including myself. Um, we taught at uh, many different companies in Japan. We had, you know, company classes at Fujifilm, Kosei Aptonics, Mitsubishi Chemical, Motohoshi Songyo, uh, GS Yuasa, Fuji Kiki. So yeah, many, many things going on. I started a chain of guest houses near Hakone. Maybe I shouldn't say chain. We just have two, two guest houses. So we host hundreds of guests and list them on Airbnb. We own uh, four properties in Japan. One we live in, the other one we rent to a family, that's in Tokyo. And the last two are our guest houses near Hakone. You can invest in things like ETFs or you can invest in your own business, for example, property ownership. So property in Japan is very undervalued. It's one of the great places in the world to buy property. So if you end up coming to Japan or um, you want a good investment, uh, look into Japanese property. It's very undervalued, very different from North America and other places. Uh, you may laugh at this, but um, one way to be well off is if, if you're going to get married, marry well. I mean, you can marry a nightmare spouse or you can marry someone who's good and solid. Um, it can really affect your future if you get divorced or what have you. Uh, I married well. I married a good, solid, caring, and smart person. Uh, she's very frugal. She's probably more frugal than me. If you want to be rich, you really need someone like this if you are going to marry. Marrying the wrong person can make you poor. Just ask, well, <laughs> anyone who's been divorced. <laughs>